and we are surrounded by storm clouds so we're, we're kind of <laughs> in the eye of the storm i guess seems to be so yeah it almost feels like there could be a circulation going on yeah it's so good oh my god let's see if it lives up to the hype i don't know let's have a look <gasps> there are over 5,000 engravings onto the stones here and it's just incredible this is rob and i'm rachel and these are our boys finn declan and ivan we have sailed our catamaran javelo across the pacific ocean we would love it if you join us for the adventure We've been chewing up the miles on our quest up the west coast of Australia to catch up with kayaker Bonnie Hancock as she attempts to circumnavigate this big red rock. It's a whistle-stop tour that we do hope to call in at one very historic island just north of Dampier. But until then we're not slowing down, which means as the weather gets warmer we have to take a cooling dip while on the run. Ah, so many places we're passing by again. Tandabiddy is right in here. And we're having to motor sail past it. Ah, oh, I really wanted to call back in there. At least drop anchor for even just a few hours. But we really got to push on. It's such a shame. This is the scene of our crimes, our so-called crimes. Where we swam with the whale sharks, you may recall. Until, of course, the officers boarded the boat and told us it was unlawful to swim with whale sharks, if not with the charter, which is just not the case at all. The concern for the department is that it's actually not lawful to swim with whale sharks unless, That's not what it's un unless you're a CTO. We were allowed to swim with whale sharks as non-chartered people. The real issue was they thought that we were on a boat uh, paying friends a la Zutara. Anyway, so the boys are doing the dragon thing. We wanted to get in closer so they could see the coral reef at the bottom. Yeah, no, cruising along the Ningaloo Reef here. But don't we get so close to the waves? You know, you've got to be right on it. And uh, we've got this seven meters deep now. Uh, we've been five meters. There's no swell or minimal swell. But you still got to look out for patches still because the chart's not accurate. I had to swerve out of one bommy that was a bit shallower. Probably would have been okay, but I went around anyway. The boys are off. It's so good, oh my god. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. I don't know, let's have a look. <laughs> Take me to the park. Let's go walking through the garden where the flowers are. Teach me how to play. Though I am old, you'll never know how much I miss those games. This morning's weather has not been kind. I got up, it was lovely, and I was just congratulating myself at manoeuvring past an island, when boom, out of nowhere, comes a 40 knot gust, completely changes the wind angle. We jive, or we crash jive, we break the jive preventer, and all hell breaks loose. I'm screaming for Robert. It was, I was on the other side. scary. It was very scary. And there were lines nowhere. flipping around, there oh, were sails God. like... Rob nearly went overboard. Flipping. I went up to fill the Janara in. I stepped onto the trampoline and then I went to grab the crossbar, the diagonal crossbar, and it just a shift in the wave and I just went... Yeah. And kind of missed grabbing it. Just fell down on the trampoline. Scary it's stuff. It's all very dramatic. Not very We've got it all sorted now. It's all sorted, but you should have a look but, at our lovely... Um, I'll show you what our line looks like. That's what we did during our struggles but we're back on track now 
I think looking at this, it's, it's, it's wild and woolly all around us. There's different systems, it looks like, even, that have come out of nowhere. It's just all over. It's big grain systems. Now, there was nothing, there was zero forecast. It's really odd to just suddenly kabang out of nowhere like that. Yeah. Um, we are surrounded by storm clouds, so we're, we're kind of <laughs> in the eye of the storm, I guess. Seems to be so yeah, it almost feels like there could be a circulation going on. Yeah. Woo! Looks like the um it's settled back to sort of 15 to 18 knots. So we'll just put all the full rig up again, shall we? Well indeed. Tell you what, we just about hit a log. Well, just about hit the log a log was probably 20 meters off to our port side, but this log was wider than the bow, or as wide as the boat. It would, if we had careered into it, man, and I'm picking, I reckon, the storm meant we went off course enough to not hit that log. I think we would have been nowhere near that log, even if, if we hadn't had the storm. That's my theory. I think the storm brought us closer to that log. That was a dramatic start to the day, but now it's brought on probably the best conditions for sailing right now in the direction we're heading. The wind was pre-squall, um, it was a squall, not a storm, it was coming out of the west, pretty much. And then after it's early, burly, and, and I reckon we had 50 knot plus gusts in that, you know, in that um, squall. Anyway, so it was west, it's now pretty much due east. And it's coming on the starboard quarter at about 120, 125 degrees. So we've got lovely sailing conditions. Chop has got up a little bit, but that's fine. We're handling it beautifully. Our ETA was sort of early hours tomorrow morning sometime. If this keeps up, we're ETA is somewhere between 8 and 10 p.m. tonight. Much more reasonable hour to be getting into a, an anchorage. All in all, pretty happy with the way things panned out. Fish on! It's stronger. <laughs> Big fish on! Are you just telling me you saw tiger sharks when you put the lure in? I just saw some tiger sharks earlier. Yeah. It's like a... Oh, so, right. oh we're near the end of our line. I'm going to have to yeah. lock it up as the we can go. Oh, oh God. Okay. Oh, God. Jeez. I don't know. Ah. Is that a new lure? Yeah. New lure. <laughs> All that line. I hate the thought of that line out here in the ocean. Oh. 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 That is one big plastic net, isn't it? It is. Oh, fishing. Oh, fishing. Well, nets is a big, big one. That's, a, that's really bad. Wow, how this. much line was that? Well, remember we caught that marlin on the east coast. And that got off, that took about half of this. So this is probably the other half. Um, so after that rip-roaring earlier session, thinking we are going to get into Dampier like earlier, the wind of course dropped back to a nominal 10 to 12 knots and we've slowed up significantly. So we've uh, been motoring, uh, motor sailing for a chunk of it this afternoon. Uh, however, on one engine, I did run one engine and then swapped engines. Uh, the engine that's not running at the moment is the starboard engine and we're going to take the moment while it's been hot to change the oil and uh, guess who we've got for that job and there he is <laughs> and so it begins with a bit of air action in behind look at those six packs my word hey eh? Declan is now loosening the oil filter. Trying to. Trying to. Oh yeah, there we go. Got it. Well done. Oil filter. And a bit of oil on the gasket there. Declan is just pouring in the last of the oil. 
thing. That's all. Well done, dude. Two and a bit liters. Yep. Oh, wee wee puku. Okay, so we are approaching Flying Foam Passage, and it's uh, people talk it up as being a bit tricky. There's uh, all sorts of thingies going on in there. There's current going one way, and it'd be going the other way further up the same channel. Um, there's eddies, there's whirlpools, there's coral heads, there's rock walls, there's sandbars, there's all sorts of things. We're all there. gonna die! We're all gonna die! <laughs> Dan, we're gonna negotiate this with great care, because we've got it at dead low tide as well. Couldn't have picked of a better course. time. But you're supposed to get it at slack tide, either the high tide or low tide, but there's still current regardless. But the best time is during those slack tides, apparently. We'll see how we go. So, Flying Foam Passage, fun fact, isn't named after the flow of the water here. It's named after the boat Flying Foam that discovered this passage, I believe, in 1863. There you go. What month? Uh, it was in July, it was a Wednesday. It was, was, it a, a, it was a slow day and uh, they said hey let's go look up that passage as you do see the actress <laughs> the the <laughs> oh, my head my head so that was nice until it wasn't suddenly it was wild and bully going out the exit there we missed the worst of it but the bow was up and down and up and down <laughs> So we're going to turn more to starboard soon and it, hopefully we might actually put up this we'll see the angles, we might just be able to sail pretty unlikely though we'll see This is a whistle stop tour of the west coast of Australia we have gone so quickly we had hoped to go and look at things for a second time or possibly see some new things but no we've just raced ahead but this is one place that we couldn't pass it's called Dipush Island and it's the Uluru of the sea that's what they call it the Uluru of the sea it's got incredible significance to the Naluma tribe of Aboriginal people and to all Aboriginal people really the first European to land here was a French commander called Boudin. Boudin? I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, he landed here in 1801, but the HMS Beagle landed here in 1842. And they left a little reminder of their voyage here. We're going to go and have a look at that and see why it's so significant to Aboriginal people. So we're going in onto Dupush Island. This is apparently crop country. Well, I just hopped in the tender. No worries. No worries, yeah. mate. I think we're pretty I've much pretty much not going to be worried by crocodiles here. But the Western Australia cruising guide does say in the creek behind here, crocodiles have been spotted. So we're getting into crocodile territory. Ivan is not with us today. And there is a good reason for it. Last night he did the shift from, his, his was the 1 to 3 a.m. shift. And um, I got up at 4.30, he hadn't got me up. He decided to let me sleep in. And, oh, what a boy. And partly because he was talking to Finn on Zatara, Finn Whitaker. When I was up there at one point, I had to check on things. Oh, they're, they're talking the whole time. What the heck they're talking about? Honestly, <laughs> I can hardly decipher. It's just rubbish. Just nonsense. <laughs> it's like hard to decipher, honestly. And your parents probably said the same thing about you and your friends. Yep. So the cycle continues. The circle of Duda. The circle of life. Let go. Woo. And it's the circle of life that we're interested in here too. Wanting to learn how early Aboriginal tribes passed down their history to following generations. Unfortunately, there is very little information online or in the guidebook about this island. So we're not really sure what to expect. Knowing, however, its significance to the First Nation people of Australia, prior to our arrival, we did check that it was okay for us to be on land here. 
So we've climbed to the top of the end of the island and these cairns over here mark sites where there is Aboriginal art. There are over 5,000 engravings onto the stones here and it's just incredible. Thousands of years old etchings. And there's even one here from the HMS Beagle, 1846. That's 17th century graffiti right there. The Naluma tribe call these engravings Mani. Unfortunately, there are very few Naluma today. After white settlers occupying the islands in the 1960s decimated the tribes of the region with smallpox. The map of the islands shows several sites of interest. Declan was all field tripped out after the first cairn, so we dropped him back to the boat, then headed to the north of the island, negotiating the rocky ground to reach the other cairns. It ain't easy walking up and down through this stuff. Yeah. Look her up and down, Rob says. Rob and I have just struggled up to this second cairn, just climbing up the rocks. This area reminds me a lot of the Pilbara district. We're probably still in the Pilbara district, I'm not this sure. Pilbara, still Pilbara yeah. district. Just red rocks as far as the eye can see. So there's another cairn here, but no art. So we're not really sure the significance, whether we've stumbled across a sacred site. I can't believe... we shouldn't be standing here. I do not know. Well, the funny thing is this, this cairn here has been built by someone. Did Europeans build this? There's no information about it that mm. can be found so far. Anyway. And I couldn't find anything online before we came here, so... Yeah. There's no art here. There's no Aboriginal art. And yet this is supposed to be a significant site. So do you want to go down to that one? Yeah. Time not? is of the essence. We Time are, is of the essence, but we are, we're only going to be here once, so let's, let's okay. do it. One thing I do know about this island is that uh, in the 1960s when they were looking for a port for the iron ore trade, they looked at this island to push, they were going to put the uh, where the trains came to in port and and take the iron ore offshore and they looked, they considered the Aboriginal art and they reconsidered and they took their idea and made the port Dampier. That's a much better idea. Uh, what is the significance of these cairns? We don't exactly know. And if we have stumbled onto a very historic and sacred site, we apologize in advance. There is nothing to tell us what this is. I do know there are 16, or at least 16, graves apparently on the island. I don't know if these mark those, but, yep. Anyway, onwards. Bit of a bind, we've come back and the tide's gone down very quickly. We came in a little channel and now it's just a, a, a rock channel. Yeah, look at it down there. Trying to get over this. This is what to get you over. It's gonna be a challenge and we've got to go quite a distance as well. 10 meters at least. We were so lucky to get out there. Goodness me. But our wheels just uh, ruined one of them, unfortunately. But we're free! Onwards to Broome! Might have ruined our shoes as well. I think we've stuffed our wheel. Stuffed our wheels, stuffed our shoes. But I had a great time on Dupouche Island. Thank you, Dupouche! We shall remember you! I went to the uh, to a channel's yesterday and amongst the bunch of stuff we got, we've got quite a few bits and pieces. Um, were these knives, these two knives. And um, it was funny when the owner when the, was putting them in the bag, he said, all oh, these are really sharp. I said, I know they're really sharp. And I did notice that there was only one of these on there when he was saying, and I felt like saying, any chance you get another one of those put over there? Uh, but I didn't, and I've lived to regret that because I reached into the bag to get something else out of the bag and my finger sliced right down there on that. And I, was, I put it in quite quickly and it just 
slice. It's not down to the bone, but it's pretty deep and it's quite owie. I was just going to show how many flies. Look at that. Lovely. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I, oh. I just fell in the water. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, share it. It helps us heaps. Come on, eat it so bad.